What's up guys, my name is Fran, and welcome back to the channel, and this is going to be episode number two of a little series I like to call, Build. So episode number two is actually going to be entitled, Why I Returned My 2018 Mac Mini. Now if you guys haven't gotten a chance to check out episode number one, I'll leave a link to it in the video description below, but basically just to give you the TLDR of that particular episode, what I ended up doing was showing you guys my brand new 2018 Mac Mini. I went over the specification list as well as did some preliminary testing so we could have something to compare it to once we completed all of my upgrades, because what I actually plan on doing is building the ultimate Mac Mini. Overall, I was extremely satisfied with the initial performance of the 2018 Mac Mini right out of the box. It completely destroyed my i9 MacBook Pro. So why the hell did I end up returning it? As you guys may or may not remember, in an attempt to save a couple of coin, I ended up going for the lowest base configuration for the internal SSD. Now, yes, I was fully aware that this was not a replaceable hard drive. I also was aware that a 128 gigabyte capacity SSD was gonna be rather small for application installations. And I also was aware that there would be some sort of performance discrepancies between this 128 gigabyte SSD and the other offered options that Apple has. I wasn't aware that the speed would be so slow. I mean, in my preliminary testing, I only got around 800 megabytes per second. Now, when comparing that to my i9 MacBook Pro of about 2,700 megabytes per second, I definitely felt like this was too much of a discrepancy and uh, ended up returning it. So if I ended up returning the Mac Mini, what the hell is this episode about anyway? Well, I went ahead and ordered another custom configured Mac Mini, this time using the exact same specifications, but going for the larger 512 gigabyte SSD. And I'm very happy to report that I'm getting much faster speeds. We're seeing about 1800 megabytes per second of performance, and this is just right for what I need. Now that we have a new Mac Mini with the high performance hard drive, let's talk about some of those other upgrades. Just the other day, I did a complete teardown of my Mac mini all the way down to the motherboard. Now I had to do this to get to the actual memory just to do the upgrade. If you guys are interested in seeing more about this teardown, let me know in the comment section below. I'm happy to post it to the channel. I ended up installing 32 gigabytes of Hynix memory into my Mac mini, and I've got to say that the upgrade went over without any problems. I will be doing a performance test as to how the extra memory actually affects things like Final Cut, but as of right now, just know the upgrade went well. Another upgrade I plan on doing to my Mac mini is actually an eGPU. Now there are a lot of enclosures out there to actually choose from, but the one I'm pressing deciding on is actually gonna be the Sonnet eGFX breakaway box. Now it's not gonna be the little one that you guys might've seen. It's like the eGPU puck that you might've seen me do a review here on the channel before. We're actually be going with the larger guy. Now there's a couple of reasons why I'm going for that one. Number one, because of the price, it retails for about $199 and it is still a Thunderbolt 3 eGPU enclosure. I'll actually have it right over here. This is it right here. But the other thing, reason why I'm picking this one is actually because of the size. As you guys can tell, there's a lot of space. It's a very similar to the Akidio Node Pro, I think that one's called, but it's definitely a larger one. It has a nice exhaust fan right over here. Now, the reason I'm actually going for this larger one is because A, I wanted to make sure that I can put large cards in there and upgrade in the future, but then B, I wanted to make sure it has great ventilation. A lot of the smaller eGPU enclosures that I've actually done reviews on in the past actually had some really bad thermal problems. They made a lot of noise. This one, so far as I've been using it, seemed to perform pretty well. Again, there'll be more extensive testing in future videos, but as of right now, I'm really happy with this one. As far as the last upgrade I actually plan on doing to my Mac Mini, that has to do with storage. Now, while the 512 gigabyte internal SSD is gonna be pretty decent for installing applications, and maybe working on one or two projects, it's definitely not enough storage for working with these large 4K files like the one I'm recording right now. This is actually where I'm gonna need your guys' help. I'm looking for a tabletop RAID enclosure that can do at minimum RAID 5, so at least have one disk fault tolerance. Preferably, it'd be USB-C or Thunderbolt 3, and none of that Promise Pegasus stuff, it's just a little bit too expensive for me. But that is it for episode number two to a build where we try to build the ultimate Mac mini, which was technically just an update. Uh, if you guys have any recommendations, questions, comments, or concerns, leave them down in the comment section below. I'd love to hear your feedback on this build, maybe some things I can do better. And like I said, some recommendations on some external hard drive enclosures. Uh, as always, if you guys like this video, slam on that like button. If you aren't already subscribed to the channel, don't forget to subscribe to make sure you don't miss future episodes of build. Once again, my name is Fran. Thanks for checking out this video and I'll see you guys in my next one.